What is doing? Welcome back to another episode. Now today we're going to be installing some Oxbeam spotlights and ditch lights on the bonnet. Now we're going to have to do a bit of custom fabrication for the old girl, but it is going to look sick. Now these things put out some serious light. We're going to turn every street and the bush into a football stadium when these things are on. Now we've got some big 90s lights going here um, and some ditch lights going in the corner of the bonnet. And then wait for episode three of this budget build series. We are adding even more. I won't spoil it, but let's get stuck into it. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to start by mounting the big spotlights. Um, and it's literally just mounting lights and running harnesses. Now, I probably can't show you too much about running harnesses, um, but I'm going to be running them through the firewall, into the cab, down into the gearbox, shifter, column thing, and then up near my gear sticks that'll be on with the flick of a switch. And we also got to wire them into the ignition too to keep it legal. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, so basically, the plan is here. These big girls are gonna sit there. Jesus, that is gonna be bright. I might have to get a bigger intercooler. <laughs> um, and then these are the little ditch lights. So I was talking with Oxbeam for ages and they eventually came up with this sick idea that we could like mount them like this. So they'll point out like this. The only issue is that they don't make brackets to do this, which is no issue. Because as I said on the channel, just have a crack, do it yourself. So I've got a bit of 3 mil plate um, and a vice grip and a heat gun and some paint. And we're going to bend up some brackets to suit this. So she should be pretty tough. And now this is just for the front. As you saw in the last episode, we got the, what's it called? Lux beam lights back on the back. And then I can't spoil modification 3, but that's going to be even better. So we are already modifying it. So these are all my tools I left out last night because I was doing the rack. Um, but already it needs to tilt back a bit just because of the angle of the ball bar that it sits on. So it looks like we're going to take this grub screw out here um, and then we're going to have to tighten the little daylights out of that to keep it in position. So we'll do that to both sets and then I'll film a little bit of us, what's it called, mounting them up. And then I'm going to show you how to run your highest, <laughs> run your highest, run your harness properly. Um, you're going to want some coro and some zip ties. Small investment, but you don't mess with the electrical. It's either that or your car burns out. Sweet. So I got them at a point where I can tilt and move it at all. I'm going to be using an M8 bolt, just a 20 mil bolt um, washer, nylon nut, because I do want to go to the Cape next year. Um, and I really don't want these to rattle off. Um, so I do have these longer, uh, I think they're 50 mils, um, should it ever need it. But ideally, um, I've got to find another 20 mil one in this pile. And I can't see it. So we might just end up using the bigger one. Mm. Okay. I already don't like that because of just how out it's sitting. It looks so out of place. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to take these bolts out, flip the bracket, see if the light still works. Um, yeah, I hope so, because that just looks real bloody funny. But, oh yeah, that does not look good at all. Hmm, okay. I flipped the bracket, and it made it a little bit better. But, obviously, if I adjust that, it still protrudes out of the car a bit, but not as much. So, obviously, I'm not really a fan of that, because I'd like them to sit like ideally under the hoops but mm, it's okay they're here we're gonna make it work um we'll just put them on for today and then we worst comes to worst we can just change it there's already holes in this alpha bar maybe we can make a bracket and put it in behind there see how we go um but let's get them wired up oh, God damn it! i should have learned Anything with a bracket and a light, you need to mount the bracket first before you bloody... Just, you, I can't get a spanner and a what's it called socket in there and under there. So, oh well, you can rip the light off, mount the bracket and then put the light back together. Twice. Okay, I'm not overly unhappy with that. That actually looks pretty good for what it is. Um, so, this pretty well sitting flush. Um... So it's legal, 
so as to get past the car. Now, I was just having a look here. One Lux at 918 meters. Um, so I haven't opened it up, but I'll, I'll open it up later and I'll get a wattage for you. Um, but that looks unreal, so give her a feel. Oh, oh. One angry little Navara. Jesus. These things are going to pump, especially with the little ones on the bonnet. <coughs> Oops. So it's like Orcs Fiend actually send you your own nuts and bolts, but that's okay. I had some nuts and bolts left over from last night, um, and I had all the sockets out and everything. But next things next is to run the harness. Now, I was talking about Coro, but it looks like it's all insulated. So obviously these are the two plugs that are going to plug into your lights. Um, there will be a switch. And then there'll be a battery side. Yep, yep. These two bad boys. So what we might do is we might just hook it up. Oh, I was going to say hook it up and we can just have a look at right there. But you're not going to be able to see because it's 12 o'clock on a Saturday. But we might get some night footage. Okay, I probably shouldn't have this on the ground. But I wanted to show you some little basic steps of electrical. Um, because if it doesn't come with a harness, you can make your own harness. Um, I'd just recommend finding out the wattage so you can use the appropriate size cable and fuses. But essentially, you have a switch side, so you can turn the light on and off. Now, this is a cool little switch, but it's not the switch I'll be using. Um, I've got a shoot off later today and get a rocker switch um, to suit the cab. But long story short, this is the cable that's going to go through the firewall. You then have a fuse, um, so your whole circuit is fused. Now, I checked this earlier, it's a 25 amp fuse. So it's more than enough for these lights. And it's a 25 amp fuse because it goes through a relay. Now a relay, oh, there we go, it's a 40 amp relay. So um, the relay will take most of the current out of it when it's switching and everything. So it should be fine. Um, and then obviously, it, so it hooks up at the battery, you get a switch side, and then you get your light side. So what I'll be able to do is plug the lights in, run it towards the battery, and then 10 times more than likely I'm going to have to extend that switch because it's got a lot of bends and curves going through all the interior. So we'll get stuck into it. Okay, so I've got them all wired up um, and I tested it and they are pretty bright. Um, what's got obviously I can't tell because it's the middle of the day. But next step is to run our cables properly. So I've got some cable ties and some coro. I have to cut it all. And we're going to fix this spaghetti mess because yes, I'm a sparky and I ran it in TPS, but that's going to be fixed today. And we're all going to do it properly. That was only there for like two weeks. Don't stress. Yeah, you can come at me. Man, yeah, yeah, dodgy sparky. It worked. And it's under the hood. Who cares? Um, and it was for a week. But oh well, we're going to fix it today, do it properly. We're going to lug everything. Um, we've got fresh terminal blocks um, on the batteries. So I might shoot off to Super Cheat and get some accessory pins where you can come off and just attach all your accessories. But um, we'll get it hooked up um, and then we'll look at getting that wire into the cab. And then what's it called? Um, we're going to start looking at making some brackets. Um, they're going to come off here for the little bonnet lights. Oh, Jesus Christ. So it looks like I over, sorry. <laughs> looks like I over tightened it and I snapped it. Um, so I do have my old terminals, but this is why I replaced them. So gonna have to replace it again but oh well not much else we can do we'll get it running for today um and that piece is still fine um i'll hit it with some contact cleaner oh well no i'll get some nice shiny ones like this again okay so i've been umming and ahhing whether to put these on because yeah the spotlights are good they pro project a direct light but with the thing that's coming next, and you're probably just going to spoil it now, it spreads light. Um, so there's really no need for these little guys, which is why I'm thinking, why don't I make use of them here in the rear, rear end? So obviously these act as massive. They're the exact same as these. They have the function to do that. So I'm just thinking, do I not just put them there and act as camp light sort of thing? Um, yeah, I'm torn. I'm just thinking it's been like a half an hour. Okay, so I've made a decision. Um, I'm going to put them on this front headboard here, uh, the front rack. Now, this nutset tool is getting a run for its money. So I used it in the last episode for these. Um, and I've used, just used it again. And look at that, just brilliant. 8 mil thread right there. And oh, there we have it. That's pretty tidy, I reckon. 
So we've now got front lights, middle lights, and rear lights. So obviously it's a little bit behind it, but it's still behind the snorkel, so it won't bother wind resistance. Pretty good. So probably won't get to, oh, actually I can wire these ones in today. Um, I have to go underneath the car, under the chassis rail, up through the firewall. But um, there's that stupid TPS. But this is just, I'm getting everything ready to go through the firewall at once. These are the lights. <laughs> okay, let's get this other side done. I tell you, I am that in love with this nut set tool. It's insane. Like, watch this. As easy as that. Oh my god, this has taken that bloody long. Um, I've had to extend cables, chop it, splice, solder. Oh my god, I literally probably just spent like an hour and a half off camera just getting it all ready. Um, but I'm trying to do it all neat too and just do it once. But have a look. You, we got lights on the back. So um, those ones will get plugged in with the harness that's there when the time comes, hopefully next week. Um, but now in the meantime, we've got to get all these cables um, into the car. Oh, okay. Now, I know I didn't film a lot of it, but that's purely because it's just under the pump and there's not that too much to show you. Um, me running cable and all this, it's not a bloody domestic sparky ad. But long story short, <laughs> um, spotlights are wired up nicely into the grill. And then if we come around to the side, we've got the little side ones that are going on. So these ones aren't as bright as the other ones, but they're still, they've got two aluminums in them. So they're still pretty bright. So we've got the front ones, side ones, rear ones. Now we just need something to go in the middle there. I'm giving you guys lots of hints. But that is it for the budget build series now, for well, this episode really. So one of the most important things you need is light when traveling, um, especially if things go south and you need to travel at night. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'll get some night footage to chuck at the end of this clip to close this video out. Oh my God. Okay, so it's currently like 1.30 in the morning, but I'm like, I really want to go test these lights and get some footage for you because I've been driving around tonight just testing them and man, I missed having spotties. So I've got my little light here. Have a look at the front spotties. Now it says they shine up to a kilometer and I bloody believe it. Like, so this is scary as anything um, because it's 1.30. But if I turn, there we go. So I'll turn this light off. Um, these are the side lights that I installed. So they're pretty well camping lights. Um, those lights there, I haven't wired them up yet because I'm waiting for the tent, but have a look. Oh my gosh, I can't figure out this light. How bright they are. Jesus. This is probably going to blind me, but oh my God. Just two spotlights. That's it. None on the car, nothing. So, hang on. I'm going to come in the light here. I'm going to jump back in the car because I'm scared, um, but I'm going to put the drone up and I'm going to get some footage for you and show you that how oh, bloody, hang on, how cool they are. Okay, so this is scary than anything because um, I am literally, um, I'm going to come into the light here, I'm on Old Roy's Road in Beer Barn and it's kind of scary out here, as you can tell. So it's an old road, but I just feel like someone's going to come out of the bush and jump at me. We'll get this sorted. Um, Haha, this thing was the best investment I ever made. Without further ado, let's do a cool transition. You ready?